guys, it's me Jake from Jakeman21642 and today I bring you a video of our loaner car we've had for the last couple days um, probably going back in the next day or two long story short, uh, this is a 2014 Volkswagen Jetta uh, TDI Premium we have this as a loaner from West Broad Volkswagen and this will probably be the last time we ever step foot in West Broad Volkswagen because the only reason we have a loaner is we were getting some service done on dad's 2007 Jetta. Um, normal wear and tear stuff, honestly, for a car with well over 100,000 miles on it at this point. And we caught the dealership in a blatant lie about the work that was done after the car broke and left my dad stranded less than 12 hours later. Anyway, not going to get into all of that in the video. Um, but this was the loaner they gave us that we got a refund. They're fixing the car. And like I said, we got this. So. I thought I would give you guys a video of it. I really, I do have a video of a Mark VI on my channel, and I actually have another one I filmed at work that I'm about to upload, a 2013. But I really can't get too in-depth with those um, other than just an overview, because of course they're cars at work, and unless you guys want me to start ripping cars at work to shreds, then, you know, start paying my salary. But anyway, this is what we have now, and honestly, this is actually the second time I'm filming this video. Because the first time I was a little too harsh on it. Um, after I've been driving it around, I really do like this car. And I'm excited to have a diesel to show you guys. Because I've had a lot of people ask me why we didn't buy a diesel. We bought the Jetta used, our 2007. We bought it in 2010. When gas prices were still high and the car market was still really bad. Diesels were selling for significantly more than the gas engine. Not to mention the gas engine I've still seen get... 36 37 on the highway multiple times and honestly my dad really just didn't want a diesel but it's a good car if you don't want the stigma of a hybrid but you still really want to have a fun car and have a normal car yeah it is a lot of the stereotypes that people give diesels to really aren't that true anymore um honestly this probably costs just about as much to maintain as a regular car does and it's a very refined and very, very reliable engine in this vehicle. So as you can see, this one does have the toffee metallic, I believe, exterior. I don't know. I've just been calling it poop colored. because That's what it is. It's poop colored. I would not buy a car in this color. It's, it's poop. There's no other way to describe it. But along the front, it does have the more chiseled front end this Mark VI has, which I think it looks good on these more updated ones in the higher models with the chrome and the chrome on the grill this one is pretty dirty along with these uh pretty angular headlights there's really no other way to describe them but they look pretty good on the side this one is riding on hankook optimo tires which they only have 4,000 miles on them so you really can't say much but they provide decent grip they were good in the rain the other night when i was driving it, it does have 16 inch alloy wheels and they're kind of boring but i think these are you can get other wheel options, but these are a little boring looking. Um, otherwise, on the car, you can see, since this one is a premium, it does have satellite radio, so you get this antenna, which actually is not body colored. I just noticed that. It's actually black. And then you have the sunroof right here. Along the back, you have the Jetta badge, your dual exhaust tips down there, and then the TDI badge over here. Which the eye is actually blue. And I'll just say this now, coming from... The 2014 Corolla rental that I had after my accident a few weeks ago to a 2014 Jetta. People can bash the Mark VI all they want, but this is still such a significantly better built car than 95% of the class. I mean, just the way the doors open and close on this compared to the Corolla is night and day. So we'll step out of the wind and glare because I'm sure you guys are tired of that and get inside. As you can see, this does have the newer key which even the key is a little bit cheaper feeling than the older ones, but that's just me. Stepping inside of it though, after these douchey motorcycles go away, of course you had to do that. Inside though, this one does have the corn silk leatherette interior, which this is actually, I don't know, maybe if it's just a different color or a higher trim level, but this feels so much better than the ones I've been in with the Titan Black leatherette i just maybe that's just me but this feels a lot nicer um on the door as you can see over here up here it's hard touch but it's kind of rubberized do have this um aluminum trim which i really like the way it looks it actually looks nice down here this is 
it's not padded but it's rubberized and soft and you actually have a very nice plush armrest down here all four windows are automatic just like the mark 5 was and uh they do have these really nice little chrome lips metal door handle and this is chrome lined as you can see my dad has all of his cds in here because the satellite radio isn't active and fm radio is awful um trunk release and as you can see too this one has the beige floor mats which just like our Jetta that came with the beige floor mats, they are gross. So we'll go ahead, start it up. As you can see, this one does only have 4,000 miles on it. Um, according to the registration in the glove box, it's been in service as a loaner since October. It has a 715 inspection sticker, so this was probably one of the last 2014 Jettas that they couldn't get rid of, is what I'm assuming. But inside, roll the window up just a little. As you can see, everything on the door I've already been over. Over here, you do have your headlight controls. If it had fog lights, you would pull for fogs, but headlight controls right here, and it's a very nice chrome-lined uh, knob for that. Down here, you do have your gauge dimmer and more of the trim, along with this right here, reminding you to only put diesel in it which I would hope someone would only do. Um, but along the dash, since this is a premium, the entire dashboard, and I mean entire, even down to here, is all soft material, and it's very nice soft like the Mark V had. Even coming up here, soft material. And unlike the Corolla, it's all gapped correctly all the way across. The Corolla was like, it was like, ah, fine, 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 gap, fine, which was great because I had to look at that while I was driving it. But along here, pillars are nice, uh, carpeted material, same woven material as the headliner. You do have the, this one does have the Fender audio system, which just let me say, I work at a dealership, I'm in cars all the time. This is one of the top three best factory stereos I have ever heard. And not only that, but this is just such a well-made car. Nothing rattles, nothing vibrates. Every, the only thing I could tell from the outside was the plate frame was rattling. This Fender audio is so good. But in the middle, you do have your gauge cluster. They're very boring. Volkswagen did get rid of the really nice blue and red interior lighting for red and white, which it's not bad. It's just boring. The blue and red was such a Mark IV and Mark V trademark. But as you can see in the middle, you do have the gauges. Um, it did just. It does have the little thing that reminded me, uh, same as the Mark V. You do get your little lane change instead of just the full. But up here gauges in the middle there is this display there's no temperature gauge which i really don't like but you do have your clock up here instant miles per gallon as you can see this one only does have 4,000 miles we got it with like 3400 i think so uh yeah this has definitely been going through my dad's daily commute along here you do have these little buttons which that was the first thing i noticed in here these two buttons are the cheapest feeling thing ever get in one of these and you'll know what i'm talking about they're just they don't even feel connected to anything. But uh, coming along the middle, you do get more of this nice uh, silver trim around the vents and stuff like that. All of that was pretty much added for the 13, 14 model years. In the middle, this one does have the nicer radio. It doesn't have uh, navigation, but this too is so much better to use than the Corolla. It, And I don't understand too, because the Corolla had Intune and I've used Intune in other vehicles. I don't remember it being that complicated, but this is very responsive. It's very precise. It works well. It's not as fast as some systems I've used, but it's not nearly as slow as, say, like my 4 Touch or something. And as you can see, it does have uh, iPod integration from inside of here. My dad's iPod Touch. But all of that, it works pretty well. And then you can just turn it off here, and it will display the time. And as I mentioned, all of this lights up red. Down here, this one does have heated seats. And thank God, it has actual climate controls. Not stupid little buttons and a screen. No. You know what you do when you want to turn the air conditioning on? That. You know what you do when you want it to be colder? That. I, did, I love Volkswagen because they make their cars as uncomplicated as possible. And I respect that so much. But coming along inside, all of this is pretty much unchanged from um, other Mark VI models. It's all plastic. I mean, it's really not as nice of an interior as the Mark V. But they really have improved it. The steering wheel, I like the way it looks in this one. On the cheaper ones, it's a little eh. But with these little chrome accents and this little piece of brushed aluminum down here, along with just the very nice way the wheel feels, they've definitely improved it. Um, 
The leather's a little soft and cheap feeling. I'd like to see how this holds up over time, but there's worse out there. The only thing that bothers me is since this isn't a completely like topped out model, I believe there would be more controls here. That's just my OCD though, is that it's kind of uneven. Down here, do have some storage. And unlike the Mark V, it's not covered, but I guess that does give you more room. But I just, I like the cover in ours. It is nice. Say you leave your wallet in here or something, but there is a power outlet which does come with the little fake cigarette lighter thing that plugs into it. And then over here, does have an auxiliary in. There's some change storage here. That's what I'm just gonna guess this is. And then back here, of course, this is the uh, diesel engine with the automatic transmission. Does have the six speed DSG transmission, which is a fantastic gearbox. It, this is one of the most fun automatics I've ever driven. That being said, this car offers a manual get the manual you will not regret it it's will probably get better fuel economy in the real world despite whatever it says on paper and it will just make a fun car even more fun i just i'm a manual person but the dsg is a great gearbox i have made it jerk a little bit at low speeds but i honestly think that's because the throttle response in this car is very very weird and especially being a diesel engine paired to a dsg transmission it's going to be a little weird at first when you're coming from a gas engine with a manual transmission like I am, but it's still pretty good. I'd rather have the manual, but it's a fantastic gearbox and even just the shifter. It's so German. Everything about it's very nice quality. You have this leather gating around here and then the DSG logo right there. And my dad actually said that he likes this shifter more than his Jetta where the buttons on the side. Back here, do have two cup holders. They do have these little feeler things in them. So, very nice quality there. And they are rubberized along the bottom. Back here, does have a leather padded armrest, which you can lift up, and then lift up completely and close, but does go up. And I believe, yeah, they brought that back to them where it will slide out. I do have the window sticker over here. I guess I'll go ahead and show you guys now. Obviously, Jetta with premium package, corn silk leatherette, toffee brown metallic, can see the performance right there so it is a two liter engine with 140 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque which is all low end torque you can see all that your safety comfort everything else and then this one does come with the toffee brown metallic corn silk leather alarm kit which volkswagen has now added that used to be standard on most cars but it's only 325 dollars the TDI Monster mats, which are in the trunk, and then the 6-speed DSG Auto. Total price, $27,775. You could probably be out the door for under that, but sticker price, that's it. And then up here, it is rated at 30 city, 42 highway. Go ahead and put that back in this cavernous glove box that this car has. Also, to the light in this glove box, it's like a light that would be in a house. I opened it at night, and it lit all the way back to about here. But otherwise up front, everything's about the same. Um, you have your mirrors and everything up here. Like even this is a little cheapy compared to the Mark V where you had that nice little button. This is just kind of, you push on it. But you do have your SOS, um, other things up here, and then your interior lighting and your sunroof controls, which again are kind of cheap compared to the Mark V, but they got to cut corners somewhere and they have improved the interior on this car this also does have one of my favorite features at night that the mark 5 does which are these two little red lights which cascade down so put the automatic driver's side window down unlock all the doors release the hood now one of volkswagen's trademark things about this car was best in class rear seat legroom and that is true which surprised me because our mark 5 actually has kind of a tiny back seat like, usually when my family and I go out to dinner, my mom will sit in the back because she's more comfortable there than I am if we take the Jetta. But this car, that is not the case. I'm 6'2". I have a perfect amount of headroom because the ceiling actually kind of comes back and then goes up in since this is a model with the sunroof. But as you can see, that's where I would sit. Plenty of room. Now, they did cheap out and only put the pocket on one side, which again, Mark V, pocket on both sides, but... There you go. Everything on the door follows through, hard touch. And then back here is padded and you do have more of that around here. In the middle, there is some storage, 12 volt outlet, 
And unlike the Mark V, they've incorporated the locks for the back doors into the middle. On ours, there's this very nice button right next to the handle, which again, it's typical Volkswagen where if it's locked, let's test that in this one. Yep, you pull it once and then pull it again and it unlocks it. But in the back, as you can see, the floor mats are flipped over for some reason. It's been that way since we got it. And the seats, everything follows through. It's very nice feeling. The headrests are very nice and plush. Up here, you do have this, which I don't know. I don't like the way it looks, but it's not that bad. And then in the middle, you have your armrest, which the Mark V, you had that very nice plush armrest, which had the lift up storage compartment back here. And then the cup holders, which popped out, it was straight out of an Audi A4. This, you get a hunk of plastic. But it's still not bad. It's plush back here. I can just imagine being on trips that this would get irritating to rest your hand on, but it's a nice amount of space. And then probably one of the worst things in this car is in the old one you would pull and this would pop down and it was a very nice, substantial feeling, well-built compartment here for your ski pass. This, yeah, it... So, the corners have been cut, things have been improved, but I still personally prefer our Mark V. I think Volkswagen did definitely Americanize this car and it definitely shows. Which for a lot of people who care more about things like backup cameras and stuff like that, it's perfect. Which this car does have a backup camera, I forgot to show that. Don't even get me started on the fact why anyone would need a backup camera in a Jetta. It's a compact sedan. But coming to the trunk, I'll end my rant here. Um, one thing they did improve also is the Mark V, you can only release the trunk from inside or from the key, which really isn't that big of a deal once you actually live with it. My Accord is the same way. But for the Mark VI, there's that nice little release right here. And one of my favorite parts, the LED plate bulbs from the factory. This, I don't know what this is. This wasn't in the car two days ago, but it has my dad's name on it, so. But back there you can see the, um, you can see the little piece which goes to the ski pass. And underneath of this, you can see all these mats, which depending on how much more of a hard time the dealership gives us, um, they might end up on eBay. But right here, you do have the cargo system, which is amazingly still in the packaging, which these come out and they stick down to this little mat right here and you can organize them. Another thing is on the Mark V, you got that really nice metal release right in the middle, the metal handle you would pull up on for to access underneath of this. On the Mark VI, you just get a little slit right here. Spare tire, full size, of course, because it is a Volkswagen. And then you do also get these rear seat releases right here in the trunk. As you can see, unlike the Mark V, it is not lined. Well, I mean, if you consider that a lining, but I mean, just little things like that. It also does have hinges, or it does have hinges, excuse me, when the Mark V had the very nice struts, which were a very interesting design, but these do intrude on your cargo. My dad actually did notice that. He had a bunch of stuff in the trunk and it got crushed. But as you can hear from the exterior, it runs pretty smooth and quiet, actually. Like, it really doesn't feel like a diesel um, just being outside of it while it's idling. You can see it does have a partial power passenger seat. And you can see how nasty these beige carpets are getting. <laughs> Like, I would definitely not want this interior. It's just the name Corn Silk, I think, sounds absolutely nasty. Inside of here, massive glove box, as I mentioned. But the Mark V, it was really nice and felt lined. This, it's plastic. You have your TPMS reset and little punch outs where other things would be in other models. But it is damped. It's nice quality. It's just not as nice as the Jetta used to be. And I think that's the point I'm probably trying to make with this video too much. Just having a Mark V in our house for over five years now. This just isn't really what the Jetta used to feel like. But it does drive and feel like a Volkswagen when you're in it. I have to admit that. Up underneath the hood, very simple release. Just like the Mark V, it's right over the Volkswagen logo. And you get a prop ride. It doesn't have struts anymore. But up underneath of here, you do have a two liter uh, inline four cylinder, which as the window sticker said, has 140 horsepower, and I believe 236 pound feet of torque. So moves the car out very, very well. I mean, I have to say that it moves very well. 
Right here you can see the battery. It's not actually in like a battery box. It's just in this. There's some leaves under here. But it runs nice and gets excellent. It's been getting excellent gas mileage for as much as my dad's been driving it. So we'll step back inside and I'll give it a quick rev for you guys. And then I'll make a separate test drive video. Does have a rev limiter around 2500. And put the window back up. I'll show you just how quiet and nice this interior can be. I mean, there's engine noise, but it's fairly quiet for what it is, like the Jetta has always been. And nothing creaks, nothing rattles. You really do not feel any vibration. So we'll cut it off. And as you can hear, when you leave the lights on, it actually does that very nice little Audi chime. And then goes back to the Volkswagen one. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video, any questions, comments, anything like that, drop a comment down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more.